are listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Brought to you by Fit Plus Faith, the podcast for Christian women to grow healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. Jumpstart your health with your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. Here's your host, Dr. Melody Stevens. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Christian Women podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melody Stevens, and this is season two, episode 34. If you're just new to the podcast, we are going through the faith, fitness, and food devotion for women. And these recordings are taken from our live devotions that we do on the Fit Plus Faith Facebook page at 8 a.m. Pacific time on weekday mornings. We've got some really exciting things coming up in our community that I want you to know about. First is starting this Friday, which will be February 22nd, we are going to be launching a new six-week slim down challenge. So we've had amazing results for the ladies that are just finishing up our new year slim down, and so we'll be starting a new one this Friday. So if you are part of the Healthy Christian Women Facebook group, I will be posting information in there as well as on the Fit Plus Faith Facebook page. So stay tuned and look out for the links if you want to join us in that upcoming challenge. And the second thing I want to share with you is keep your eyes out as I will be rolling out this new training that God inspired me over the past few weeks called the Heart First Health Method. It is looking at our lifestyle of health from a Christ-centered perspective, focusing on your heart first, and then from there outflows into the stewardship of your body and the renewal of your mind. So stay tuned if you want more information about that as well. I'm really excited to begin to share that new framework that the Lord gave me to empower you in your health journey in mind, body, and spirit. So without further ado, let's dive in to episode 34. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Paula. Great to see you ladies here this morning. Wonderful. We've missed you guys for sure. You are some of our regulars and we have missed you. So I'm glad you're both here. And we are talking about be cheerful this morning. So I think this is just such a perfect thing to be talking about during the holiday season. Wouldn't you agree? I thought it was really cool that yesterday um, and just throughout this week talking about um, being enthusiastic and asking the Lord for help. And I just think so many of these topics are perfect as we're heading into the holiday season, and especially today about being cheerful. Hey, Diana, good morning. So as you ladies are hopping on, I'm glad Paula, you're coming in from Texas. I love it. As you ladies are hopping on, uh, definitely share, tag, and invite right now. That would be awesome. Happy Friday to you too, Diana. So share, tag, and invite, tag a friend, share this on your feed. And of course, the more that you engage, uh, the funner our Videos are, is that a word, funner? The funner our videos are. So morning, Jordan, as well. Glad that you are here and I've been praying for you and just so wonderful to have you be such an amazing part of our community. So we love you and I'm glad that you're joining us this morning. So let me go ahead and pray for us and then we will dive into our topic this morning. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these women that are here that are taking of their time and gathering together to hear a word from you and to encourage one another, to be lifting one another up and praying for one another. We thank you for community, community that we have online and community that we have all around us but we thank you that we're able to come together in this way. We ask Holy Spirit that you speak to our hearts this morning through this message of being cheerful and uh, just speak to our hearts exactly where we need it to be and what a timely message as we head into uh, the holiday season. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, thank you, darling, for tagging all of those wonderful friends so that they can also be encouraged by this message today. So we're talking about Be Cheerful. This is day 34 of our Faith, Fitness, and Food Devo. It's 50 days long, and here we are on uh, day 34, so over the halfway point. And the verse this morning is Proverbs 15, 15. It says, a cheerful heart has a continual feast. A cheerful heart has a continual feast. What an awesome little verse that is, right? Proverbs 15, 15. We could all memorize that right now. Proverbs 15, 15, a cheerful heart has a continual feast. I love that. 
when we are cheerful, we see God's blessings all around and we have more and more that we notice to be thankful for. So incredible. It says, as Christians, we have so many reasons to be cheerful. God is in his heaven. He remains firmly in control. He loves us. And through his son, he has offered us a path to eternal life. If that were it alone, that is enough reason to be cheerful throughout this life. If that were it alone. But what is so incredible is we know that that's not it. Even though he's already offered us eternal life and eternal salvation, he still does more. It's so incredible. He still desires to have an intimate relationship with each of us to guide us, to love us, to comfort us, to provide for us in this life, which he doesn't have to do. He already is providing eternity for us. That should be enough reason to be cheerful every day. But yet God does more. He says we love him because he first loved us. And so we have a reason to be continually grateful, continually cheerful. The reasons are literally endless. May we never stop seeing them. Amazing. It says, despite these blessings, all of us will occasionally fall victim to the inevitable frustrations of everyday life. When we do, we should pause, take a deep breath, and remember how richly we've been blessed. Cheerfulness is a gift that we give to others and to ourselves. The joy we give to others is reciprocal. Whatever we give away is returned to us, oftentimes in greater measure. Have you experienced that to be true? So make this promise to yourself and keep it. Be a cheerful ambassador of Christ. He deserves no less and neither do you. Absolutely. He deserves no less and neither do you. Jordan says, I love God so much. Just praying makes my heart light and puts smile on my face, even in the hard time. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful that you can turn to the Lord in prayer and just doing that, you know that you have that relationship with him and it changes you. So good. Paula says, Give me, gives me chills. That is so awesome because it's incredible. It's incredible. We have so many reasons to be cheerful. I love that it says, be cheerful ambassadors of Christ. I gave a talk last night at a women's event and we were talking about the armor of God and talking about the boots of peace but it's, it's the boots of the gospel of peace. So it's not necessarily saying, uh, because the Holy Spirit does give us peace. So when we put on, it says, fit your shoes, fit your feet with the readiness of the gospel of peace. So thinking about that, we need to be ready to share with others the message of hope and of peace. And it's just, there's so many things for us to be aware of, so many things for us to be grateful for and to be cheerful for. And others are looking to us to say, does their religion, does their beliefs really make a difference in their life? They're looking to see, they don't say it, but they're observing. And so when they see you living a life of gratitude, of cheer, of peace, living in God's mercy and grace, with a cheerful heart, it will change their perspective and it makes them pause and think. Maybe what they believe actually does change things. Maybe it, maybe it is true, maybe there is something there. And so it's just, we forget oftentimes that we are living, walking testimonies of who God is and that plays out in our lives. And so what are others seeing in your life? If you proclaim to be a Christian, if they know that you have faith, if they know that you go to church, if they know that you are a believer, hey Sue, good morning. 
if they know you're a believer, then their eyes are on you. They're looking to see how do you respond? Do you act any differently than anybody else? Or are you just as hot-headed? Are you just as tempered? Are you just as quick to respond? Are you just as overwhelmed, sad, or depressed as people who don't have the Lord? Because you shouldn't be. Because when we have our faith and our hope in the Lord, it changes who we are. It changes how we respond. It changes our life, literally. And if you don't feel like that's happening for you, then you better get ready to go to a deeper level with the Lord. So good. So let's turn to more of our scripture. So our scripture this morning, right? Our scripture this morning that we are to memorize today, ladies. Proverbs 15, 15. It says, a cheerful heart has a continual feast. A cheerful heart has a continual feast. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always. This was a verse from yesterday and from some previous ones too. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always. Psalm 100 verses 1 through 2 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Man, what a visual, what an image that is of how we should be approaching our life, how we should be approaching the throne of God, singing and rejoicing. Ashley, good morning. Singing and rejoicing, worshiping with gladness, coming before him with joyful songs. I love that. And this we're, we're headed into the season of songs, aren't we? The Christmas season is characterized by music, carols and music. So we are to come before the Lord with joyful songs. I love that. Jordan says, when I was struggling with how to spread the good news without being forceful, and I realized just being cheerful was the way. Jordan, that's awesome. That's awesome. You don't have to force it down people's throats. You don't have to be overbearing and confrontational. You just live your life with the peace and joy that you have with your relationship with the Lord, and it will change your response, and people will see, and the door will be opened for you to share. Diana says, yes, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Yes. I'm trying to, there's a song that's coming to mind right now and I don't remember all the words. Um, I probably only remember like a little phrase of it, but it was a song uh, from church years ago that said, clap your hands, all you people, shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people, shout to the Lord with a voice of joy. Hosanna, Hosanna, sing to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Something like that. Praise him, praise him, shout to the Lord with a voice of praise. I'm just making up a lot of those words right now, but that's the gist of that song. It was an upbeat, happy clapping song. And it just reminds me of joy of coming before the Lord. Shout to the Lord with a joy of, with a voice of triumph. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. So beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching the replay right now. Sorry. If there's a delay on the video, <laughs> so I'm getting caught up in watching the replay of the song. So funny. Anyways, such a riot. Philippians 2, 14 through 15 says, Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. It goes back into how your attitude influences others. So cool. So cool. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up our bones. Dries up the bones. A cheerful heart is good medicine. If you are feeling like modern medicine is not fixing your ailments, I would hearken you to look at 
the continents of your spirit. How is your spirit? Is it joyful? Or is it grumbling? Is it lacking faith, lacking hope? What is it? A joyful spirit is going to change things. It says it's good medicine, right? That's why they say laughter is good medicine. It truly is amazing and we can't always fully explain it, but we know it lights up the brain in different ways. It increases hormone levels and endorphins in different ways. When you smile, when you are joyful, when you are cheerful, it literally changes your brain chemistry. It is medicine for you. It's incredible. There's so much science around that. Jordan says, oh my, Philippians 2, 14 through 15 is one of my absolute favorites. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. That is so beautiful. Doing everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. That is wonderful. And then Psalm 118, 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So beautiful. Um, there we go. Another song is coming to mind. I've got all these old, these old church songs coming to mind with these verses this morning. <laughs> so this one, uh, this is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I love that when scripture triggers a song. Man, we talked last night, in this talk I gave last night, we were talking about how do we hide God's word in our heart? How do we do it? We do it through memorization, through reading the word, through speaking the word, and we do it through singing, through singing. Why is so much of the Jewish culture wrapped around their songs. If you notice that, their history and their current culture is wrapped around songs because God has wired us to use song that plants it into our memory. So singing and singing the words of the Lord, singing songs that reflect his word is another extremely powerful way to hide God's word in your heart. That is why teaching kiddos songs about the Lord, they will, that was a song, these songs that I'm singing to you today, I, I learned them 20 plus years ago in church, even longer than that. And so singing is absolutely a way that the Lord will trigger the Holy Spirit, that's part of the job of the Holy Spirit, will trigger different memories when you need them. So we read a scripture and a song comes to mind. It is the way that we hide God's word in our heart. So good. Sue says, I need to listen to this every day. Absolutely. Well, Sue, join us on these weekday morning devotions every weekday morning or save this particular video if it speaks to you. Save this video so that you can return to it. Absolutely. I'm so happy that you're here. Jordan says, the hardest part is continuing to be cheerful when others are negative, but asking the Holy Spirit to work through you really helps to stay positive and spread the love and not get yourself down. Yes. Diana says, Psalm 118, 24 is part of Teresa's tagline on her morning devos. That's awesome. Teresa is another leader that I work with. That's wonderful. Sue says, God has really been putting this on my heart lately. People need to see our joy. Yes, they do. They do. They need to see it. Our world is hurting and it seems like it's hurting more and more, doesn't it? They need to see our joy. They need to see that there is a different path for their life, that there is a different way, a different opportunity available to them to experience life in a different way, to experience freedom and love and joy that comes from the Lord. 
You're so right. Diana says, singing will definitely help or listening to praise and worship songs. Exactly, exactly. Any way that you get God's word into your life, especially connected to song, is so powerful. So good. So some of our quotes this morning are about cheerfulness. Letty Kalman says, it is possible to see God's will in every circumstance and to accept it with singing instead of complaining. To accept it with singing instead of complaining. When you are in a situation where you just are feeling pulled down and you want to end up going to that negative place, sing, sing, find something to sing. Sing an old song, sing this little light of mine, sing a Christmas carol, sing something that comes to mind, sing a praise song to the Lord. It will get you out of that place. Marie T. Freeman says, God is good and heaven is forever. And if those two facts don't cheer you up, nothing will. So good. That's all we need to know that God is good and heaven is forever. This is temporary. The joy that we will experience in heaven is forever. Jordan says, I just want to say a little funny thing. What's up, girl? Remember how I was drinking so much honey and the verse mentions, yes, if you find honey, do not eat too much or you will get a tummy ache. Yes, I do remember that. She says, um, well, I got the flu. I found this kind of funny, even though being sick wasn't fun. I think I'll lay off the honey. Definitely. That's so funny. Hey, Sandra, what's up? Sandra says, I've been praying that people see Jesus through me. Yes see how I conduct myself and trust God through the storm that you're currently in. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. It is when we go through those storms as well, when we go through those difficult times that people are definitely watching, they're watching to see how you respond. And it's not that we don't experience the emotions and it's not that we don't, that we dismiss the difficulty, but it's how else do we respond to it? What then is our reaction and our response. Absolutely. People are watching and you can use that difficulty to be a testimony because we're all going to go through them. So you use the difficulty to be a testimony of what it looks like to walk through a storm with the Lord, the hope that that gives you the strength that that gives you knowing that you can lean on the Lord when you feel too weak to go too weak to stand. And so, man, that's beautiful. I'm so happy to hear that. Juliana of Norwick says, the greatest honor you can give Almighty God is to live gladly and joyfully because of the knowledge of his love. Awesome. The greatest honor that you can give Almighty God is to live gladly and joyfully because of the knowledge of his love. Absolutely. That is all we should need. That's all it should take. Uh, Charles Spurgeon says the practical effect of Christianity is happiness. Therefore, let it be spread abroad and everywhere. The practical effect, what should happen practically in your life because of your relationship with the Lord, because of what Christ has done for us, what does that practically look like? And he says, it's a life of happiness. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't mean that we don't go through the storm, but it means that we have a joy and a happiness and a cheerfulness that is above all of that. That helps us weather the storm. That's why it says, yes, therefore let it be spread abroad and everywhere. Amen. That is what the Lord wants. That's what God's intention is, is that the good news is spread throughout the world. Sandra says, I totally agree. I say that all the time. Focus on a response, not reactions. Absolutely. Jordan says, yes, it is a testimony and our weakness only makes him stronger. Yes, the Bible tells us that in our weakness, he is made stronger. Paul says, I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses because that is 
when the Lord gets the credit, right? That is when God takes over and helps me become stronger. And therefore my weaknesses are no longer weaknesses. My weaknesses are opportunities for the Lord to become stronger in my life. Amazing. And then Oswald Chambers, one of my favorites, he says, a life of intimacy with God is characterized by joy. A life of intimacy with God is characterized by joy. If you are lacking joy, increase your intimacy with the Lord. Increase your prayer life. Increase your time in the Word. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit to a greater degree. Give Him everything. Lay everything down at His feet so that He can begin to carry you, that He can begin to work in your life. Man, so beautiful. What a great message this morning. What a great message on this Friday, right? To take us into the weekend. And then our food fitness and today's focus tips. Food tip says, avoid the grocery store snack attacks. Don't go grocery shopping when you're hungry. Do you already know that? I do. It is a big mistake to go grocery shopping when you are hungry. Not only will you end up buying food that you don't need, you're also more likely to splurge on unhealthy snacks. It's very, very true. We want to go to the grocery store when we are not hungry and when we have a specific list so that we go with intention. We don't need to get superfluous items that we weren't planning on. We don't need impulse buys. We can stick to the perimeters of the store and get in and get out and, and plan healthy. I love when the majority of my grocery store shopping is done in the produce section or I have very little items that are outside of the produce section and everything else is coming from the fresh produce section. That makes me feel good. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the fitness tip says, pick the right fuel. If you place high value on the body God has given you, then place high importance on the food you use to fuel it. Fresh, natural, unprocessed foods are going to be the best. Food is our fuel. So what kind of high octane fuel are we putting in? Are we putting in low quality? Or are we putting in high quality, high nutrition, high nutrient density? And then today's focus says, focus on the fact that a cheerful heart is a continual feast. What was our verse this morning? Proverbs 15, 15. I want you to memorize that today because it's simple and easy. Proverbs 15, 15. A cheerful heart is a continual feast. Feasting on the goodness of the Lord. What better is there to feast on? Feasting on the goodness of the Lord. What a beautiful message for us today. Thank you ladies for being here with me this evening this evening, this morning. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hi, Hannah. We're just wrapping it up. So you're going to want to catch the replay. Oh my gosh. When I gave that talk last night, I kept saying good morning instead of good evening. Cause I'm so used to saying good morning in these devos. And then right now it's morning. And I just said good evening cause I was correcting myself last night. Anyways, too funny. Thank you for being here with me this morning. Ladies have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I'll see you inside the healthy Christian women Facebook group. Diana says, sad to admit, but years ago, I ate a whole loaf of fresh out of the oven French bread as I shopped. I know when they make that fresh bread right there in the store, it smells amazing, right? I needed it for the spaghetti dinner and I had to pay for two loaves. <laughs> the cashier who was my friend laughed at me. Seriously, Diana, that is a really hilarious story because it's true. Fresh bread really is amazing. So that's a really funny story. Thank you for sharing. Jordan says snowboarding this weekend. What? Have a great time. Have a wonderful time snowboarding. Be safe and have a wonderful time. Absolutely, Paula. This was awesome. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. We've missed you. Glad that you are home and that you're back able to join us. And I'll see you ladies again Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time. All right. All right. I love you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Are you ready to experience breakthrough in your mind, body, and spiritual health? 
Join us inside the Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle Membership and get started today. Visit fitplusfaith.com forward slash join. That's fitplusfaith.com slash join. Step into health and wholeness in Jesus' name. Join today.